Good morning, everyone. Good morning and welcome to another day of Adobe Live. <laughs> now in stereo. That's right, Tim. We got it. We got it locked down. We had a little audio trouble yesterday, but we are on. We are we are on it today. <coughs> oh, as much as my voice is. Um, I'm your host this morning, Evan Abrams, uh, motion designer. Um, graphic designer, um, mover of pixels uh, from Ottawa, Ontario. Thanks for coming out. Thanks for hanging out with me this morning in this getting started uh, in Adobe After Effects this morning. If you're new to After Effects, if you haven't opened it before, or maybe you've, uh, maybe this is the first program in the in the Creative Cloud that you're getting into. Today is for you. We are going to be uh, dipping into uh, more After Effects stuff, more beginner friendly, more fundamental things in After Effects. So hopefully, it's going to be uh, it's going to be a good time. Um, and uh, yeah, so if you have any questions, because this is for beginners, do ask me in the chat. We are streaming out on Behance.net and also on YouTube. If you are watching this on YouTube, please come and join us. Please come and join us on Behance.net uh, so we can we can see your, your questions, your chats, what's going on. We'd love to see uh, that stuff uh, over there. Speaking of stuff and things, uh, we have a rich full day of activities coming to you today. Um, just like yesterday, just like almost every day of the week, uh, we have excellent things here on Adobe Live. So let me just uh, pull up the schedule so we can all enjoy what's coming up later in the day. So after your, your morning with me, you've got a, a creative challenge uh, coming up where you're gonna be making some album covers uh, perhaps. Uh, and then we're gonna have uh, part two of finding your personal illustration style with Meg Lewis uh, after that, 12.30. And then we've got Illustrator creative challenges. We've got more XD uh, creating a podcast app, uh, which is gonna be great with Talon. And uh, oh my goodness, then XD creative challenge. And then we round out the day with design in the dark, um, a wonderful blending of reality TV and design. Uh, it's pretty fun. It's pretty funny. Um, and you know, the people on there are having a good time with it because um, design can be stressful. Uh, client fo focused work um, uh, can be, it can sometimes be uh, stress elevating, but I think they have a great humor about it. And, and I love that they kind of uh, take that approach. All right, so let's get into what are we doing today? Um, today, I'll be taking you through more fundamental things in After Effects, um, and we are going to see uh, what kind of things we can get into here. Um, and uh, yeah, we are going to be um, we're going to be doing some great, um, hopefully great things. We're going to be continuing on with our theme of doing kind of social media posts with this, and hopefully um, it'll be illuminating to some of. Um, the more essential uh, things that we do uh, in After Effects when it comes to motion design. Yesterday, just to recap, let's have a look at the screen and we will uh, enjoy what we were doing uh, yesterday. Yesterday we talked about quite a number of things. Uh, we made, um, we assembled together this kind of social media video uh, using you know various slides, various scenes, a lot of text, a lot of shape layers, talked about modifying properties, uh, we talked about animating them, getting into the graph editor, and we talked about this process of what we called going up the stairs, where each scene kind of animates on over top of the, of the previous one, right? So this scene is coming on over top of the previous one, building on, adding, adding, adding to what we have. Um, and today, we're gonna look at a few things. We are gonna look at, um, going down the stairs, the reverse of that process. We are gonna look at some video ideas and we are gonna continue on. There were some great questions yesterday that I want to kind of address today um, about text animators and uh, that it was gonna be um, 
So things about text animators, things about mats, things about masks. So hopefully uh, that's going to be good for everyone. <laughs> And yeah, uh, Joel, I, I do think of myself as an animation massager. I'm constantly massaging these keyframes. <laughs> but I want to say, say you know, hello to everyone who's who's coming back today. We got Gareth in the house. <laughs> Kenneth Williams is in here. Our mod, Tim Mobest, holding it down. Um, so if you have any, any stream-related quandaries, hit him up. Uh, Reverb Mike, good to see you back. <laughs> good to see you, Sean. So good. People from all over the world, wherever you are, please uh, do let me know who you are, where you're from, and either what you're doing in motion design or what you'd like to be doing um, and what you'd like to be learning. You know, we're all kind of on a journey uh, of discovery here. So there we go. <laughs> mm. And that's right. It's this is gonna be real upstairs, downstairs, uh, Downton Abbey style um, period piece here. So, what do I mean when we're talking about fundamentally? When we're talking about up the stairs, down the stairs. Like I said, up the stairs means we are animating on elements that overlap and come over top of things. It's usually what we're we're meaning when we say we're going up the stairs. That newer elements are found um, at a higher rank. In the, in the layer stack than older elements, right? And when we are going down the stairs, if we were to go down the stairs, it would look differently. We would have the older elements hanging out here, and then we would drop down the stairs to the other elements. So the things that would happen at the end of the video would be found lower in the layer stack. So what we want to do here is to think about how we leave a composition. How are we exiting from this comp to arrive at this one? And as you can see, Mysteries of the Sea, and then it goes away, and then this thing arrives. So this is sort of a different methodology to think about these things. And uh, hopefully uh, it's gonna be a good, uh, a good thing. <laughs> and Angus, uh, this is my this is my wonderful mug from Bo's Oktoberfest uh, here. They have an in-house design team that does a great job uh, on this stuff. <laughs> and we'll see, we'll see what we get into. Um, but yeah, we're seeing super great stuff in here. Um, uh, wanting to make uh, Kenneth is saying that they they want to make uh, animation they can use at the start and the end of all videos. So we often call that kind of a top and tail. Um, and sometimes um, we uh, we want to think about animating on, animating off um, in those things. So if you're thinking about uh, elements like bumpers or stings or whatever uh, terms we want to use for those, um, hopefully we can get you techniques here that will help uh, make those things um, possible. <laughs> Um, and yeah, uh, something that I will say uh, for anyone watching this, um, don't worry, don't worry. If you have to duck out, you have to go do something. Uh, all this stuff is archived for all time and all space around here. So it's going to be uh, it's going to be here for your viewing pleasure um, all the time. And today we're also going to be talking about using video in interesting ways. Um, so let's get into it. Let's dip into some new ideas today that are a little bit different um, from what we did, um, <laughs> from what we did yesterday. Uh, good, good to see you here, Roland. Always, always a pleasure, man. All right, let's get to it. Um, and ju just a, just a heads up to anyone, uh, hanging out on the YouTubes, please come over to Behance so we can, we can see and enjoy, uh, your chats in here. So, do, 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 do. Let us get started um, creating this first kind of thing. This this uh, revealing of text here. A simple revealing, not much to it, but we're using uh, some techniques that we didn't talk about yesterday when it comes to shape layers, and I think we simply must get into them. Okay, so we're gonna go. Um, we're gonna create a new a new composition. Whenever you're working in After Effects, some of this may be a little bit, um, a little bit of a recap from yesterday, but we assume that some people are are kind of new here today. So, compositions in After Effects, like we talked about yesterday, are containers. A composition is kind of like our artboard, or it is our sequence. This is the the unit that contains uh, elements that we're going to work on. And in general, I get a lot of questions about, well, what frame size, what frame rate should it be? Well, they should be uh, 
in keeping with where this is going to go. So if we are going to create something for social that's going to be a square video, we want this to be square and we want the frame rate to be um, in line with the frame rate that whatever platform we're gonna post this on understands. So in some cases it's 30, in some cases it's 24, um, maybe that, uh, that drop frame, uh, 29.97. We're going to go with 30 uh, today, keep it consistent. We're going to work with square compositions because um, I really enjoy things that are square and symmetrical. I'm a very square person, so maybe that makes sense. And uh, let's start it off. We're going to, we're going to talk about um, trim paths uh, to start with. Um, another wonderful tool that you're probably going to want to know about, um, the ability to trim paths. And <clears throat> if we want, say, a line to come out from the middle of, of the comp and then and then have two lines move apart from each other and have text in between, some of the techniques we learned about yesterday will help us get there. And I'm gonna start by drawing a line with the pen tool. We used a lot of rectangles yesterday, we can use parametric shapes, but we're gonna use a line today. And I want to make sure that I am drawing uh, perfectly horizontally across uh, my, my canvas here. So I'm going to click Hold down shift and click over here. Now, shape layers can get confusing, right? That where things are doesn't seem to always line up with where we think they are and, and that kind of thing. But for us today, this is gonna be simple. There's not gonna be a lot of like repeaters and all that crazy stuff. I'm gonna keep it simple. But I've drawn a line out there and we don't see anything, right? So there might be, um, something, uh, what's going on? What's wrong here? Well, what's happening is that this is a line, but it doesn't have a stroke on it. The stroke, as you can see up here in this uh, contextual bar that changes depending on what you're selecting, you may need to make your stroke uh, larger so that you can actually see it. If it has a stroke of zero, we're not gonna see anything, right? So let's go ahead and maybe set this to like 20 pixels. That looks pretty good to me. And what I want this to do is to uh, animate on in some way. So whenever I'm talking about um, animating things on and, <laughs> and we want this to, to arrive, uh, we want it to go from being nothing to being something, okay? So in here, we can add modifiers to our shape layers. And we can go here, you can go into this little add thing here. And I think maybe they're called deformers. I can't remember what the, what the official the official name of these this list of things is, but just like yesterday, we were talking about text layers and how we can you know animate things about them using a little little twirl down like this. Here we can add things uh, <laughs> to here. Oh no, now today <laughs> reverb bike's cracking me up. <laughs> Uh, if anyone knows all the lyrics to the different strokes theme song, let me know. Um, so in here, I'm going to add something called a trim paths. Now trim paths is going to allow us to see some or all or none of whatever strokes we have out in the world. So if I were to animate this, say from 0% up to 100%, and we set keyframes by uh, clicking on the little stopwatch here so that uh, you, can, you can set a place in time and, um, and, a, and a spot. So here, here at one second, I've set a keyframe on this property, meaning that at this point in time, this property is 100%. And at this point in time, this property is 0%. And then After Effects uh, figures out what's going on in between to go like that. So we've got, oh, fantastic. We've got this line drawing from one side of the screen to the other. This can be very helpful. If you'll permit me to go on a little bit of a tangent right here. <laughs> and, uh, oh yeah, shape shape operators, shape operations. Is that the, <laughs> is that the thing? Okay, so if you were to draw perhaps a more interesting path, you know, squiggling all over the place, you know, we can then use that trim paths right, and trim paths here to trim that path. Whee, like a roller coaster, look at it go. And it doesn't just work on paths like that. If you were to say, make a rectangle, let's say we're gonna make a rectangle, maybe it's a rounded rectangle. Ooh, look at that cool rounded rectangle. And then of course we add a trim paths to that, wouldn't you know it? And now we can, oh yeah, 
Look at that, it's behaving exactly the same. So <clears throat> trim paths can be a nice way to sort of add this thing in. <laughs> and yes, yes, you could have you can have uh butt caps, round caps, projecting caps, you can have miter joints, round joints, all the all the wonderful stroke things uh, that you would ever, uh, ever like. Um, okay, so that tangent aside. <laughs> it's both. <laughs> it's a geometry class always around here. So we now have this line that is animating on. Okay, but what if we wanted it to animate from the middle? We wanted this path to kind of come out from the middle. Well, that would be pretty easy as well. See, we can keyframe both the start and the end of this thing. So here's what we're gonna do. We are gonna just drag this out here. So at the end, we know that we want zero and 100. And at the beginning, we're gonna set both of these to be 50%. Uh, so 50% is in the middle of the line. And there you go. Now the line is expanding from the center. Pretty easy stuff. Simple, simple things to think about. And we're going to ease these two keyframes by hitting F9. We're going to go into the graph editor, which we talked a little bit about yesterday, uh, because the graph editor allows us to have more nuanced, smooth motion. And early understanding of the graph editor will save you a lot of headaches in the world. And I think it is very, I think it's one of the more essential spaces to get into if you like animation, if you like motion design, make friends with the graph editor. It will, it will save you a lot of frustration. The graph editor is where we are manipulating the speed over time um, or the value over time, depending on which graph you're looking at. So we're looking at a speed graph here and we grab these handles and we give them a pull so that things are going very, very fast at this point that you can see here. I'll just zoom in. Ah, woo, there we go. We'll zoom in here so that we can see it's very, very fast at this point and then gets very, very slow until it's not moving at all at this point. All right, and so we are going to go here. We're going to go whee, like that. So because we've pulled this handle, we've given this handle a big pull, both the handles, that they are starting fast and then slowing down. So I think that's a nice relaxed kind of motion that we would want. <coughs> and then we're going to have this line uh, move up. So we're going to call up the position by hitting P. And you don't have to hit P, as we've said yesterday. You can twirl in here. We can twirl into the transform, the transform of that shape layer. And we're going to move that layer up. So we're going to set a keyframe on position. And we're going to move ahead a little bit. And we're going we're gonna to just drag that up. We're going to drag it up here. These green lines here, these green lines that I'm using to line things up are my proportional grid. You can toggle that on and off over here. I like to use the proportional grid because it helps me keep things in proportion. Um, and, uh, you know, keeping things proportional is is kind of essential uh, for good design, um, at least for those of us who are adherents to grid systems, because I am an unimaginative person. Um, and so in, in this way, uh, we, are, we are keeping things regular uh, by moving things around. No, I, I really enjoy keeping things normal. Um, and so I'm going to ease these, ease these keys move them a little bit. And again, we are going to pull the handles, give the handles a pull so that they're kind of moving like that. So it is expanding and moving. Great. But we want two lines. We want a couple of those. Um, and we are going to sort of make, make those things happen. <coughs> oh, <laughs> also a lot of Dune quotes today. Awesome. So I want a second uh, path, and so I'm going to duplicate this one, and I'm just going to, because we are here at the last sort of keyframe on here, I'm going to drag it down, which will alter that keyframe, and there we go. I'm going to create it, you know, just push it right down there. So now these get wide and then fall apart. Fantastic. Maybe I'll speed that up by pinching these two together gets wide, gets tall, excellent stuff. There we go. Um, <laughs> hmm. And so now we want text to reveal in the middle of this. Okay, I'm gonna turn the grid off now because I'm pretty sure I've got things where I want them. Um, and I want a text to show up in the middle. 
All right, so I'm gonna just go ahead and drop some text in here. And let's see, let's see what to say uh, in the text. I don't know. Usually you wanna start a video with something um, that hooks people's interests. I don't know, like 10, uh, 10 fish facts uh, you won't uh, believe. That's a thing I see on the internet a lot, um, <laughs> telling me what I won't believe. Um, <laughs> you don't know my capacity for imagination. But we'll just we'll just plop that here in the middle. And in fact, if you want to align things, uh, we're going to go window. We're going to grab the align panel so we can quickly align it in the middle center of things. Um. <laughs> Man, oh, I, I wish Dune would come out sooner. That's that's a that's a property that I really enjoy. So now we need to reveal. The fish facts. We need to, or I'll, I mean, we need to reveal the words that say fish facts. I don't think there's really an impetus to tell people more facts about fish. But we talked about yesterday um, some great ways um, that uh, we can reveal things. We talked about mats. We talked about masks. And we're going to do a little refresher about those today. Um, and so masks are something you draw on a layer and... Uh, so we can see parts or hide parts. So I've got my text layer selected. I'm just going to draw a rectangle on it. Um, something I'm going to I want I want to point out. This is new. Um, so if you're if you're on an older version of After Effects, it's not going to look exactly the same as this one. But if you can if you have a close look at my cursor that's kind of floating around, you see that it's got this little uh, icon next to it. So it's like a cross, and then it's got the the little icon next to it, and. On here, you know, when we've selected a layer, you can see that it looks like this. It's got, it's got this little mask icon. If we have nothing selected, it's got a little star next to it. And um, the, the star means we're gonna draw a shape. And if, it, if it's the uh, mask icon, we're gonna draw a mask, right? So that's how you know, that's what I'm about to draw in the space. And I really love this little quality of life uh, feature here. So I'm going to draw a mask, and as you can see what the mask does is, by default, it is set to add, so it is adding to the space. It's adding what we can see. And by default, if this is what you add to your selection, everything else is not selected, um, so we don't see the rest of the thing. So we can take this mask, we can take this path, and I'm just going to use the free transform here <clears throat> to make it the same size as this box. Um, and we are then going to keyframe the mask path so that it goes from being large to small, small to large. You know, it, it just needs to expand out from here to there. And it'd be great if it expanded at the same speed as these lines are moving. So I'm going to go in, I'm going to easy ease these, easy ease these keys. And what I want to do is just make sure that all of these have the same uh, curve to them. As they as they expand, so that way we know that that mask is going to line up. And <laughs> hello, it's those ten fish facts you promised me. Um, so that works out pretty well for us. Now, why would we use a mask? Why would we use something else? Um, that could be kind of um, kind of a big question. You know, there are many methods we can use to um, bring these things on. And why would I use masks? Why would I use track mats? Why would I use one thing versus another thing? Um, and a lot of it is subjective. A lot of it is based on whatever case you're getting into. But let's look at a little drawback here. What if um, I decided, oh, you know what? I need to put this on two lines and I need to make the text larger. Okay, that's cool. So now I think I will just reposition this kind of in the mid. Ooh, oh, 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 no, what's happening now? Um, you can see that, that the mask moves with the layer. So the mask is attached to the layer, meaning if I move the layer around, the mask moves with it because it is relative to the layer, it, it belongs there. So if I want to move this around and uh, I, I want to, to get it in a better position, the mask is not helping me with that because then I'll have to go back and, and move things. You can use the pan behind tool to move things within the mask, which I think is a perfectly reasonable use of the pan behind tool. And now things, you know, line up a little better. So that's, you know, that's not the end of the world uh, if you have to do that. Um, 
However, masks may not be the best way to reveal this layer, right? But like I said, we have options. We have so many different options <laughs> in, uh, in After Effects to deal with. We have, we have all the options in the world. You know, if there aren't three ways to do, to do one thing, then uh, it might not be performing its functions. So if we want to reveal this with another layer, say, we can use what are called track mats or just, just mats in general. Mats can do all kinds of things. But in this case, we are going to create a rectangle. I'm going to change the rectangle's fill uh, to be a, a ter terrifying pink color. Ooh, boy, that's really bright. That's, ooh, it's hurting my, hurting my eyes, maybe. Uh, but that's fine. It's, it's here. I like to use a nice bright color to remind me that I don't really want to leave this on because it's not congruent with the rest of the design. Although I actually really enjoy um, vibrant, vibrant hues. Uh, so here we go. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make the size of this thing, changing the size of it down to be like this. Okay. And I'm going to animate it uh, over time. So I'm going to take this layer. I'm going to animate the size. So we are going to go from a size uh, of zero up to this size. We are again, we're going to make sure that, you know, all of these keyframes are, are of the same speed, you know, so that, so that they're kind of consistent uh, as things go. So weep, we can see that we now have this rectangle kind of in the middle. And then we take our fish facts and we say, hey, why don't we go ahead and, and just make, um, I'll just look at the layer above me and, and that'll decide where I'm visible, right? Um, and... <laughs> I am I am happy to see the amount of 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 enthusiasm people have for wearing proper PPE in the chat. That is that is actually very refreshing uh, for me. Um, so here we go. We got we got our fish facts, and we're revealing it again in a different method, right? But this method, because the two things are not connected, I can scale this. I can put this over here. I can I can do whatever I like with this because they're not um, locked in. They're not connected to each other, and um, they're not dependent on each other, I could move this around all over the place. I could totally replace this with things. So this is going to give me a little bit more flexibility to have this kind of uh, mat set up um, for things. Now, is it perfect? No. But it is another way when when some, um, some methods uh, don't work out super well. <laughs> Uh, but, but yeah, uh, hopefully this is, hopefully this is going to be, uh, helpful, uh, to folks. Now let us add, uh, another layer of, of things. We were working a lot with photos yesterday. And so today we are going to be working with, um, some video now. Do, 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 do. Did I leave? I didn't. Okay. Um, a lot of the video, actually all the video that we're going to be working with today is going to be coming from Adobe Stock. Now, one of the frustrations when learning uh, After Effects, when learning um, about video stuff is having good quality materials to work with. So I, I really applaud uh, the people at the Adobe Stock team for opening up a lot of free uh, things. So if you go here into Adobe Stock, you go to the free tab, you can find a lot of free photos, free vectors, free videos, um, a lot of great things in here. So if we just go ahead and let's dip into free videos real quick and we see, oh boy, look at this. We got some fun motion backgrounds. We got a lot of aerial shots, travel, people. Um, I'm interested more in nature. Here's a man walking into the ocean interesting choice. Um, but we can go ahead and exclude people. We can say only show me what's available in 4k. And now would you look at this? Look at these wonderful shots out here, these fantastic assets um, available to us to do things and experiment with. So all of that is gratis <laughs> for you. Um, so please, uh, please enjoy. And also, you know, I, I really love the, the way they kind of license stuff uh, on here. So, um, you know, hats off to the Adobe Stock team for um, kind of making that possible um, and, and giving us um, more tools to play with um, on here. But we're going to take a flyover of the ocean um, and we are going to drop that down below everything here. And as you can see, you know, how much more dramatic is it now, right? That we are we are moving along, having a having a flyby over the ocean. That's nice. And then we've got these fish facts that we won't believe. Now, 
one thing that, that is interesting is that the movement of of the objects behind actually helps the text stand out a little bit because they're stationary. Whenever you have um, <laughs> points of difference um, between things, that's going to make them more uh, stand out more. And um, hopefully, hopefully that's going to be uh, helpful. So if you find, oh, a photo isn't really doing it, drop some video behind something and the motion will pull more attention and might even make things a little bit more uh, legible or readable. Um, However, something I'll say is that when you have movement in the background, you want to also have movement uh, of some kind. You know, feeling too static, that can be okay, it's fine. Um, but really what, what I want to do is, is add a little bit of motion uh, to this text, so or this title. So I'm going to go new, null object. I'm going to parent everything to that null object so that as the null object changes, everything else changes with it. And then over time, I'm going to just scale this up sort of in a linear linear way. Let's say we'll, we'll, we'll take 10 seconds to kind of scale this up uh, a little bit like so. Uh, maybe we even need to scale it a little bit at the beginning. Let's see. So now it's kind of slowly drifting towards us, right? That, that it's causing a little bit of motion as it goes. And I think that's going to do it for me. Good. So with this completed, we want... We, we've decided that we want to use a, a down the stairs methodology uh, when we are layering these these things over top of each other. So we need to make this scene um, pack up and go away. It needs it needs to uh, pack its bags and go home. Basically, um, it needs it needs to take its ball and get off the court. So how do we pack up this thing and remove it, right? We could run all the keyframes in reverse. Um, we could um, maybe apply like a star wipe to it. I like a good, I like a good uh, star wipe. Um, <laughs> so if I wanted to sort of make this uh, disappear on us to, to wipe it all away, to make it go away, there are many methods we might use to do that. Here is uh, one that I find very nice. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and create um, another one of these um, mats. Um, I'm going to call this like the Uber mat, um, and I'm going to make this orange. Now, why am I, why am I, why would I call it something like an Uber mat? Well, uh, because this is going to actually control how much of this layer um, we can see, how much of anything we can see in this comp. And that is because we've talked about masks, we've talked about track mats. Here is another way that layers can control how much of other layers you can see. And we are gonna go here, we're gonna go into this space, and we are gonna go and change this down to stencil alpha. And right away, oh, thank goodness, Evan, you made that layer go away. I'm so glad you did that. Uh, stencil alpha, what does that mean? What's happening? Well. This layer is now stenciling using its alpha what we can see. So only in places where this layer has alpha information or opacity are we going to be able to see any of the other things below it. How wonderful is that, right? So now if we start manipulating this layer, say at five seconds, maybe it's scale, maybe it's rotation. So if we just set some keyframes for that and we're just gonna go ahead, maybe 10 seconds, we'll take 10, 10 seconds to get you done here. And I will just shrink this down like so, Whew. like that. We can get a little bit more um, intense if you like. We could, we could start rotating this, get a little compound motion. Woo, spiraling away. Okay, bye. There there it goes. Ciao. Um, and so we can we can pack up this whole situation because it now ends on being completely transparent. So anything that will be found under this when we when we pre-compose it and we put it somewhere else will show through because this is all the transparent uh, zone out here. So we're we're packing it up uh, with that. Now Granted, we're just using a rectangle. You could use all kinds of shapes, like a beautiful star wipe, if you'd like. Uh, but it could be literally, literally anything uh, that you like here. So hopefully that that makes sense um, as as this is going. So it's a very basic way to control um, where layers are are going and and what's happening, right? So hopefully that makes sense. Um, 
Mm. And and uh, Gareth, that's a good question. What do I mean by compound motion? So, yeah, generally when multiple things are are multiple drivers are contributing to the movement of one thing. So, for example, um, we have um, this thing is scaling down and it is rotating. Right, that's two things that are happening at the same time. If we went ahead and had a separate driver on here, right? And we were to say like, okay, we've got one, one set of things happening to the scale, right? So it's, it's going like, whew, like that, or maybe, um, actually let's make it uh, try to go the other way like this. So it's starting out slow and then going quicker. You know, if you were to then have sort of a, um, uh, let's see, what we usually do uh, with compound motion is something like, I think another sort of classic example of this is this layer here itself is scaling, right? This this null is scaling up. So it's helping to drive movement of these layers. And these layers themselves have motion happening on them, right? So this is helping to sell these, to, to make these a little bit more nuanced. Um, so it's this multiple driver effect uh, that happens. So you're, you're compounding uh, these ideas. Um, we usually see this a lot sort of in character animation that um, if my if my shoulder is, is locomoting my arm and my elbow is also locomoting my arm, right, that the compound result is 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 smoother to have these multiple drivers making the hand do something as opposed to the shoulder goes, then the elbow goes. That's more robotic. So we're trying to be more organic, having what we would say in traditional animation as overlapping uh, motion, at least in a character context. Um, but <laughs> these aren't characters, so it doesn't really, don't really fit as well. Um, so hopefully that concept uh, makes sense. So that was a little bit of, a wee bit of a tangent there uh, to get into. Um, now, something else that I would probably want to do here um, as this thing is sort of going, um, I might like to scale this sort of up down uh, as it's going. So I'm going to grab the scale of the flyover and um, I'm going to scale it up. So it's going to get bigger as this other thing is getting smaller, identical curves perhaps. So it's like that's pushing up towards us as the thing is getting smaller, so that could be an interesting feeling because we are going to assemble this. Day two, assemble. Um, and so, um, is that even how, how you spell assemble? I don't know. Build? I, for some reason, I am not great at spelling. Assemble. Maybe it only has one S. I'll just call it day two project. <laughs> All right, so we have our uh, da, 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 our our trim paths uh, thing. So it's going to come in here, and wouldn't you know it? Look how long this layer is, right? Because this comp is forty five seconds long, right? But we know that at a certain point, this layer is done, so it can help to put markers in here, and markers you can drop on your timeline by hitting the asterisk. So we're just gonna put our playhead there, drop a, drop a marker, 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 bunch of cool markers. So now if we drop the trim paths on, would you look at that? It's a couple of, there's a couple of markers living on that layer. How fun is that? And so now I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm going to trim this layer to terminate at that point. But we know that the the going away is, is gonna be, um, happening here <laughs> oh oh <laughs> patricia i don't know if i need to watch more avengers mm. but these markers can help us to line things up because we know that the the going away part will happen here and um <laughs> that'll be that'll be going away <laughs> Oh boy. And uh yeah, so hopefully that is going to be going to be good. Um and yeah. Um let's see, let's see. Let me just take a dip over to the uh the various chats, see if there's any questions coming in. Um any further questions? Oh, I see some 
<laughs> Some people uh, uh, chatting it up in the YouTube. If you're hanging out on the YouTube, um, please come come on over and and check out the the Behance. Come to Behance.net. Uh, but <laughs> Anil, good to see you. Good to see you hanging out. Um, and uh, hello, hello. Um, and uh, thanks for the correct spelling. Always, always good to know uh, how things go. Language is constantly evolving. So. Now we need to put things under this. We need to place things under this thing in order for us to reveal them, right? So let's make uh, let's make another um, another piece for us to enjoy, um, and hopefully, hopefully it'll be good. <laughs> and Jay is asking, "Do I do magic tutorials?" Um, I don't know. I'm not sure if I've if I've ever done. Um, that might be somebody else. Um, my brother does a lot of close up magic, and I don't necessarily enjoy. <laughs> no, <laughs> I think I used to do more VFX stuff, um, and uh, my career has shifted to do more motion design stuff. Um, yeah, <laughs> magic. I know. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Camera tricks and the like. Anyway, let's let's make more things. Let us make more things. Fish fact. So this is going to have a wonderful fish in it. Here's a fish. This is, from what I understand, this is a lionfish. Uh, when I lived in, is it? Is this a lionfish? I don't know. Maybe this is a. I feel like it is similar to when I when I lived in the Caribbean um, for a little bit. Um, these were an invasive species, and I did not like them at all because they will poison you with their spines. Um, so, <laughs> yeah, uh, maybe. Uh, so, hopefully these are, I don't know, I'm sure they have a home somewhere. <laughs> I like I like those fish facts. Fish can breathe underwater. Loving it. Okay. So what we're going to do is we are going to pop up some things. We did some callouts yesterday. Callouts are those wonderful little bits of graphics and text that tell us a thing. So let's make one of those here. And let's see. Let's see. We're going to grab our rectangular tool. Um, let's see. I'm just going to make like a black square. And let's see. Let's see. The size of the square is going to be... Mm, 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 mm. Let's start it off. That might be too big, but that's fine. So we're going to bring this thing on, and then we're going to move it um, somewhere else. <laughs> that's, that's right, I did. I, I lived on um, the island of St. Vincent uh, in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Um, wonderful island chain um, that is certainly not without its troubles, um, and uh, many of which are caused by environmental um, displacement. So, um, yeah. So we're, we've got this thing, uh, coming on and we talked about yesterday manipulating our graph so that this is more extreme as it comes on and then smooths out. So we go into our, we ease a keyframe, we go into our graph editor, we give this a pull like so, and then we end up with this kind of motion that I really enjoy. Um, and, then let's see, let's see. Because we're doing a bit of rotational stuff uh, going on, let's have let's have a bit of that as well. So let's see, we are maybe going to do a similar things. So we're going to go, there we go. So this is going to come on. This needs perhaps a number on it. Um, <laughs> fish are not to scale. I like that. <laughs> That's fun. Um, so I'm going to put uh, a number one on here. Whoop, and position it there. And we are going to parent this layer to the other layer. As we talked about yesterday, parenting, very useful because it means one thing will now control the other one and it will be much less work for us uh, if these two things hang out together. Um, but speaking of, of that kind of thing, we talked a little bit about compound motion. So I'm going to take this text layer, I'm going to put its anchor point in its middle center. And as one scales up, I'm going to do something with the scaling of the other. Ooh, what an interesting idea. And here I'm going to, let's say, let's scale this up to like a thousand at the start. Um, and let's see, we are just going to bend these keyframes to be a lot more like this. 
So now we have, though this layer is parented to this layer, so they're behaving together, this one is also behaving con contrary to it. So this creates this kind of emotion. Um, so let's see. Let's see if we like that kind of a thing. Hmm, that's okay. That's not terrible, right? And um, what we can do here, um, maybe we instead want this to uh, start uh, much smaller and kind of uh, grow. So now the two things are kind of working in parallel to each other. They're both scaling vertically, but there's, there is a, a bit of maybe parallax between the two of them, that kind of feeling. So that could be something. So like we were talking about, the concept of compound motion is, you know, you're making me scale and I'm going to scale me and, and we're going to we're gonna have these different drivers of scale that, that ends up having more nuanced uh, movement to it. So it doesn't do us much good to have this thing hanging out up here. So let's go ahead and after an appropriate amount of time, we will uh, move this thing along, right? We're going to grab its position. We're going to grab its scale. We're going to set keyframes on those and we're just going to move it down move it down using the power of grids. I'm gonna just scale this down. Maybe let's go 50% of the size and drop it down here. Ooh, let's get even smaller. Let's just let's just put it in a box here. Let's put baby in a corner um, like so. So we're just gonna drop it into the little box here. And then we will have the, the fish fact come out to the side here. Let's do that. So we're gonna ease, I'm gonna ease up these things. We're gonna go back into the graph editor here, yes give those handles a pull. So now we're gonna see that it goes like that. So we are gonna go, gets big and then gets small. And we'll probably want a little bit more time in between here, a little bit more time here, like that. There we go. So this thing is now moved uh, down here. Um, and oh, newer, that is a very depressing fact um, about, um, ooh, oh no, I've got a spinning wheel. Do, 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 do. Something loading? There we go. Now we're resolved. So <laughs> it's a very depressing um, fact about plastic. Anyway, um, so yeah, let's continue on uh, with this stuff. And like I said, if you have any questions about the process, do let me know. <laughs> and yeah, let's uh, let's warn people about these terrifying spines. Do not touch. Um, that's probably good advice. <laughs> Don't touch this fish. Um, po poisonous? Poisonous. Po po poisonous. There we go. This poisson is poisonous. Uh, <laughs> that's only funny to me. Um... <laughs> So uh, we are going to try to position this here. And then let's see, let's see. Um, maybe we go instead of this, let's go down to medium maybe. And maybe we will bring this down a little bit. And as you can see, we probably have some balancing issues, right? That we need to, we need to work out here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, try to position these two things a little bit more, there we go. That is feeling quite a bit better. Even margins on both sides. I'm happy with that. <laughs> oh, there's, there's plenty of, plenty of uh, people par <laughs> parler le français over here. Which is great. So, how do we want to bring this text on? We talked a little bit yesterday about text animators, um, which are a powerful suite of tools when you twirl into text and you go animate, and then you pick something about the text to change. And I'm gonna change the position of it. And what we're doing is we are just gonna go ahead and just grab all of this and we're gonna move it all to be on the other side of that square. Okay, awesome. Cool. So now everything's over there. Great. And what we're going to do is we're going to take the range selector and we're just going to select less and less of it. So right now all of it is being selected by the range selector, meaning that all of it is being pushed, you know, 
705 pixels over in that direction, right? It's all over there because we've selected all of it. And if we were to just select less of it, it would start to get where we want it to go, right? Isn't that, isn't that fantastic? Um, <laughs> so, so we'll see about, um, about how we can make that happen. Now, there are a few ways, and I'm going to show you, yesterday we were using uh, the square shape of this thing. Now, today we're going to use the ramp up. Look, there's a bunch of them in here. There's so many interesting things we can do. So square is basically saying, hey, everything that I'm selecting inside this range selector, we're going to apply this to it. Now, uh, if I were to animate using that, I will just simply take the start here and I will move ahead and I'll just shrink that. I'll just bring the start to the end so that nothing is selected and we get something like this, which I think is, is fine. If I don't want it to come on with each character at a time, I can change it down here to words. I can change it down to have each word happen one at a time. It's still not great. It's still not super good. So I'm going to take the ease low here and I'm going to, I'm going to try to ease the way these things come on, which is okay. I think that's, that's kind of fine. Um, and you know, that's, that's okay, but, but it doesn't really flow, right? It's kind of just like clunk, clunk, clunk. <laughs> Joel is all about that expression selector. Um, and as this is a, a getting started stream, we will pretend it doesn't exist for today. <laughs> it's a very dicey um, little thing and something that I don't, I don't dip into uh, a lot um, myself. I, I don't know. I don't know if I'm the best person to, to speak on the, the functions and uses of the expression selector. Um, I wonder who even, I don't know. I, I, I always try to think about who is using it and what are they using it for? Um, but anyway, that's a, <laughs> that's some inside baseball. Um, <laughs> for today, we're going to keep it simple. And the, the only more advanced thing we're going to do is not use the square. Instead, we are going to use the ramp up. And you'll notice as soon as you make that change, uh, this thing is not even animating remotely the same as it was before. Now, why would that be? Why would that be happening? Let's find out together, shall we? So what is happening when you apply the ramp up to things is that the, um, the shape here, so the range selector, right now I'm selecting 50% uh, from zero to 50 of this, of this stuff, right? I'm selecting, you know, half of it. And what I want to do is, is use the offset to push that range selector through the text to cause the change I want. Because on one side of the range selector um, is everything has been, has had this applied to it. But on the other side, once it's been pushed all the way through, once it's been pushed through um, the, uh, uh, the situation, you know, it's all been gone, right? That change has been processed through. So that's kind of what we're doing here with the offset. So let's process this through. Whoop. So we're going from, you know, the range selector is all the way off. And now we're going to process it through like that. And I think that is working pretty well for me. Feels a lot smoother anyway. So that's nice. But one thing I don't like about this is that even if we were to drop it behind the square there, um, we can still see it. And I don't like that. So I'm going to take my mask and I'm going to draw a rectangle around the area I would like to see. And <laughs> we've got it handled. Like we talked about at the beginning, the mask itself is relative to the layer that we've placed it on. And the animators, the text animators, are moving the position of the text elements within the layer. They're inside there. And so by applying this mask that is like a window into the layer, then, you know, things are just sliding into that area where the mask is at. And that is working out quite well for me. Um, so hopefully that um, kind of makes sense, right? Uh, hopefully that... Um, that can, that can kind of help uh, for folks. Um, so let us continue on. How would this look in context? Okay, let's take our fish fact and we will apply it. We'll put it underneath this because uh, like we said, we are, um, we are going down the hill. And so we're gonna bring our fish fact 
down here. We're going to put it under and whoop, that looks pretty good because the motion of this thing kind of feeds into the motion of that other thing we did. And what we might do, what we might do in here is to just take these layers here and give them a pull a little bit. Just pull them, pull them forward um, in time so that they kind of line up a little more. So it's like this is crashing into that. It feels like that's what's happening, even though that's not even at all what's happening. Um, After Effects is, um, uh, I know I poo-pooed close-up magic um, not even 20 minutes ago, but uh, After Effects has a lot in common with um, the realm of illusion, perhaps. Um, and um, what we're going to do here is I'm, I'm going to take a little bit of an aside here to talk a little bit about how things in After Effects can appear to be the same, but are structurally different and, and, and what that's all about, right? So let's say, for example, we want to... Um, composite two things over top of each other. Uh, I have uh, some footage of a forest. Cool. And let's see, let's see. Let me grab real quick here. Um, here is some uh, 4K footage of some fire, right? Very large. Oh boy, big, big, scary fire. Um, and uh, which is, of course, something that, that you know, threatens uh, woods and wildlife uh, more and more these days. Um, if I can just harp on our need for that kind of thing. Um, and what we're going to do is I want some text here. So I'm going to just type in the word fire. And um, I'm going to make this uh, kind of chunky text. I'm going to make it quite large. Um, and we're going to go like this. All right, so we've got the word fire. And what I would like is to have the word fire full of fire, right? So I'm going to go to fire 4K movie here, this, this video, and I'm going to go track mat and use the alpha mat of the text. So now, you know, the word fire is simply full of fire, right? Hopefully that... Um, kind of makes sense um, that as we talked about with track mats, you know, we can we can fill one thing with the other. This layer is is looking at the layer above it and deciding, oh yes, that is where that is where I'm, my pixels are going to be seen. You could also use uh, alpha inverted uh, of that. So we're punching a hole uh, using using these things. Um, so hopefully that kind of makes sense um, the way the way that kind of goes. Um, I find that using uh, video footage in this way can can cause some really interesting results. Um, and in particular, if you start using very large, uh, chunky, um, thick text, uh, you can get some interesting uh, interesting looks here, especially when um, the uh, uh, footage. Um, is, is kind of moving when you have uh, various moving elements happening. So, you know, you see these trees are moving and, and stuff is working out like that. So what did I mean by the magic trick though? Let's talk a little bit about, about that situation, okay? So if we wanted text to be full of the word fire, so we've got fire and it's, there we go. So we've got, this is referencing that and that is causing this here is the mat, right? And this has now created this, this textual element. I can move this around. Great. If I wanted to then um, slip something in behind here, um, I don't know. Um, we could we could put uh, anything back there, right? Anything we anything we desire um, could go behind this element like that, um, this is working. This is a setup um, that kind of works. Um, and do, 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 do. what we could do then, what if though you wanted uh, the order to be a little bit different in this? So I'm going to accomplish the exact same look, but I'm going to um, uh, mess with how it happens. 
Um, and so we're going to go here. We're going to remove that track mat, and we're going to take um, the mat, and we are going to uh, just switch the order of everything around. And now the forest is going to have an alpha inverted track mat. And look at that. We've accomplished the exact same image, the same um, sort of composition. Um, and uh, we'll see if we can if we can do something about this. But what's neat about this now is if you wanted to drop something behind the fire, what it is is it's back here, right? It's it's back in this space, right? Um, and whoop. So we end up with uh, a sort of. Um, the ability to drop things behind because we've created a hole, right? This is actually a hole in that. So when we're talking about the kind of um, challenges uh, that happen uh, in compositing and we're thinking about, well, what goes on top of what, what goes behind what, you know, you know, why would I use one method or another method? You know, a lot of this stuff comes down to um, subjective ideas of, of layer order and what you want to be um, dropping on them, right? So, <laughs> for example, uh, Gareth is saying, what if we put some drop shadow on this, right? Well, if we were to do this, right, if we were to place some drop shadow, you know, it's a little bit more difficult because this is actually a hole. So, for example here, with this, if I were to put a drop shadow, oh, look at that. I don't, I don't see any drop shadow at all. What's going on with that? Well, because there's there's not really much to see because, because of the order in which things are applied to each other. So, you know, even though this is cutting a hole in that, there's, there's no, there's no thing there. Um, which is a little bit weird, isn't it? Um, so if you wanted to, say, put uh, a shadow inside, how would we go about achieving that in particular? Boop. You say, well, show me the shadow only, perhaps. Maybe that's going to get us uh, closer to where we want to go. Um, we would want to, um, if you want to have uh, a definition around the outside, right? Like, it's, it's all about sort of... Um, sort of figuring out uh, the way that you want to uh, order these things and what you want to do with them. So there's a lot of creativity that can come from this. And there's a lot more, um, it's a lot more like a collage than, um, than other things, right? So yeah, if you wanted inner shadow, um, all these, all these ideas. Um, but let's, let's see about sort of making something kind of interesting. Um, out of this to kind of play with uh, the parallax of this stuff. All right. Um, and we're, oh, you want, you would like to try some layer style? Well, we could, we could always try to, to operate these things. So the layer style, and I didn't, we're, we're going on a bit of a tangent now because uh, I didn't really intend to to dip into this stuff. The, the order of operations is a little bit different. So we've now dropped a drop shadow on this, and you'll notice that when you look at this, it is doing what we wanted, right? The 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 one thing didn't do it, but this is doing it. Um, so, uh, do, 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 increase our distance a little bit. So now you can see it's kind of like we're looking through. It definitely makes it feel like we're looking through the whole of one thing, and we are now looking into the world of another. So hopefully that kind of um, makes sense uh, the way that kind of works, right? So there you go. So any who's <laughs> loving, loving the suggestions from, from the crowd. Um, but there are a few things that I want to talk about uh, because we've got, we've got another um, uh, sort of 25 minutes together. Um, there are a few other things that I wanted to dip into here with you um, to talk about so that we, um, we make sure that we, we get to all of these ideas. So, We've talked about going down the stairs. We want to talk a little bit more about um, making use of video um, in these things. So in this particular project, these two pieces of footage 
don't feel particularly um, unharmonious with each other, right? So if you if you look at these two pieces of video and we just play, you know, between the two of them, you know, they're not so different from each other. Um, when we're talking about video, um, we, we start to look at um, things like um, uh, white balance. We start talking about things like color correction and color grading. Um, and the important thing here is that if you're creating a piece, even if it's even if it's for social media posts or whatever, um, you will probably want footage that feels harmonious with each other. Right. And, you know, we got a bunch of blues here. Then we come in, oh, there's slightly different blues, but we're still in the blue zone, right? Um, here, these clips look so different from each other um, that it is distracting. So you would want to try to harmonize clips if you can. Harmonize your elements, unless your, your intention is for it to be um, uh, jarring in this way. Like, this seems so much more muted and... Um, washed out than sort of the vibrant uh, fire situation that's going on. Therefore, we should use some tools to try to bring these things into harmony. Um, and uh, I like to just use the color correction Lumetri color that I'm going to drop onto the forest here. This is going to be a little... <laughs> A little bit of an introduction to um, the idea of, of color correction. Um, I'm only going to touch the basic correction tab here to to try to um, increase the contrast, say, um, in what we've got here. So I'm going to crank, 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 cranking that up. So as you can see, it's getting much more contrasted um, as things go, right? And let's see, let's see, let's bring... Uh, bring some of the darker elements down, down, down. There we go. That's that's moving good. Um, maybe we'll bring this up a little bit. Bring that down. So we're still we're really we're really over cranking our our contrast. But as you can see, it's starting to bring a lot more uh, sort of vibrancy um, into the space here. Um, and so hopefully that um, kind of makes sense. And um, we are. Uh, now a little bit more uh, harmonious in our elements. All right, so hopefully that's hopefully that's good, and it, and it kind of makes sense um, with with why we would do that. That we would want kind of the contrast to kind of you know push push those things around. And um, I think Lumetri has been in uh, After Effects for a while, right? So you know we can we can keep increasing things like the highlights. Whoa, whoa, we're getting crazy out there. Um, so there are a lot of a lot of pushing you can do um, with this stuff, and that is even before you get into things like the creative um, mode here, or or we get into um, various specific curves. You can go really deep into color correction and stuff, um, and uh, and and that kind of thing. So just this is a little uh, a little touch on it, um, so that you you know. Um, Kind of how how that stuff is going to be doing. Um, <laughs> so you know, since I we're assuming everyone's kind of a beginner um, uh, watching this, we don't want to go too far in there. But something I did want to get into is um, making something creative with this kind of thing. We talked about um, separating the elements and 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 doing something interesting with them. So what I'm going to do is create a weird amount of kind of parallax between them. Um, and we'll see kind of how that feels uh, as we do it. Meaning I'm going to affect uh, the scales of these things uh, to create something um, kind of uh, maybe unique and interesting, right? That we are going to keyframe all the scales. I've pushed all of their anchor points to be on top of each other. So for this layer here, I've moved the anchor point and oh, I can't really see it because there we go. Now, now you can hopefully see it a little bit better. Or uh, uh, I'm trying to make. There we go. Thank you. Hopefully you can see it. You can use your pan behind tool to move the anchor point and uh, hold down the command key to snap it into the center. So hopefully that's going to be good. Um, all right. So here we go. We are going to. Uh, grab these things and we are going to just affect their scale um, over time, right? So let's see. Um, let's say this mat, let's make it smaller, 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 smaller. Let's take the forest 
and let's see here, let's make it bigger, 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 like this, and then let's take the actual fire itself, um, and we'll make it um, uh, smaller, 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 like that. Now, these are all scaling at different rates, uh, which is going to cause kind of a strange uh, feeling between them, um, and hopefully, hopefully a good one, right? <laughs> a good, a good amount of strangeness um, that's going on. So hopefully that kind of makes sense uh, with what we're doing there. Um, uh, do, 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 do. And yes, a uh, question from uh, Elizabeth. Um, uh, all of the things, uh, everything is always available. Uh, check it out on, on Behance. Check it out on YouTube. And uh, hopefully that will be good. Hmm. So uh, we've, we've talked a lot about mats. We've talked a lot about masks. We've talked a lot about text layers. Um, there was another question from yesterday that I did want to get into. We need to make, let us make one more, um, one more uh, nature fact uh, for people to enjoy. Um, so let's see, I'm gonna grab, um, let's see, uh, what do we got here? Do, 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 do. Clownfish, I've got, I've got a clip of clownfish in here. Um, and I'm going to make clown fact. Um, Clownfish here, boop. So now we get to enjoy uh, this footage of a clownfish. Looks nice, swimming around, swimming around the anemones. Um, and let's see, I'm just gonna drag it this way. No, no, no. Show me, show me where it's up here. Yeah, that's that's nice. That's better. Don't don't hide from me, clownfish. We want to see you. Okay. Um, so someone was asking yesterday um, about. If I had a text layer, um, and you wanted to um, animate different parts of the text layer in different ways. So let's see, let's see. I'm going to take my text layer, I'm going to draw um, with it selected with the text tool, I'm gonna to draw that selection box out, and we're gonna create um, a nice big paragraph block here. Uh, clown fish are not as scary as clowns. All right. So, because this is paragraph text, when I scale this up, it's gonna it's gonna bump like so. Um, Good. So clownfish are not as scary as clowns. True, I hope. I hope forever true. Um, but uh, there we go. So we've got we've got this paragraph of text. And the question was, what if I wanted um, what if I wanted some of the text to animate in one way? What if I wanted um, some of the text to come in from another way, right? And uh, you know, hopefully that's going to be, <laughs> hopefully that's going to be good. Um, and we're gonna we're gonna see how um, how this kind of works out. The text animator, like we said, um, generally applies. So we're gonna we're gonna animate, and let's say it was some from the right, some from the left. Okay, so I've got animator one here, and I'm gonna you can rename this, and I'm gonna say from the right. And hold on, I'm just gonna I'm gonna size this up because we are gonna dive a little bit deeper in here. And so from this, if we want to push everything to the right, so here we go, we're gonna push to the right. All right, goodbye. And in the range selector, I'm gonna put this at say 50%. So there you go, this stuff has returned to the middle. So if I want these to come in from the right, I would simply need to shrink the range selector here, the range selector, right? We've selected um, the first 50% of the stuff and we've pushed it off to one side, okay? And so, now, if I want it to return to the middle, I simply need to shrink the range selector so that the start returns here 
like that. So you can you can see, I hope, uh, these two little red things here that are do 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 right? So it's, it's bringing that together. Okay. I'm going to go into the advanced and I'm going to go down to, um, based on not characters, but words, because that might help us here. Great. So we've got things coming in from the right. And what we want to do is to bring it in, um, the other half from the other side, right? How would we achieve that? Well, we can go ahead and duplicate this here, this was an animator before, so it was called just animator one, and we re renamed it to be called from the right. I'm gonna call this from the left. And from the left, we simply need to change um, what is being selected, really. And so, let's see, uh, from the left, so this is going to be like minus uh, 890, right? And um, what I need to do is make sure that I am uh, selecting the right amount of stuff here. So everything from um, from one side to the other is now going to sort of come together. So let's see, do, do, do. So that's all still working out like that. And I'm just gonna collapse this. Very similar to our, our idea, whoop, 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 to our ideas uh, when we were using the trim paths, right? We are ending up with um, these two selectors that are now, mushed together, right? They're selecting nothing, but the point at which they're, they've come together is right, right in the middle. And one of them, you know, goes up to select everything above and the other one's going down to select uh, what's below, right? And so now it's whoop, 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 like that. Yeah, so there we go. Now, now 50% of it is going this way, 50% of it is going that way. Now, granted, um, uh, the, 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 the oopsie that I've made here is that we probably don't really want it to be hanging out at, at 50%, right? That's not the, the place. Um, what we would want is um, for it to be divided kind of into a couple of lines. So <laughs> what we're going to do is I'm just going to try to massage this a little bit to get it kind of um, get it in, in the right spot, right? And um, we'll see about about uh, making that kind of uh, happen. It can get a little bit dicey here um, only because, hold on, now I can't see everything. Hold on, let me just make this small so that we can see what's happening. Um, it, it gets a little bit dicey because we want to make sure that we are, we are selecting uh, all the things we want to select, um, if that makes sense. So here we go, let's select we go. So 62 seems to be uh, the interesting spot. So 62, da, da, da. is that going to be correct? Um, but da, 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 da. And then we bring it into 62 and 62. Hopefully this is correct. There we go. So that is kind of working, right? Now, it's a little bit imprecise, and it's imprecise because... Uh, da, da, da. Hold on, we are going to grab these. We're going to reset them. We'll grab these, I'm going to reset them. Because we are using index instead of... Um, we're using the index of the layer instead of um, the... So we're using the percentage instead of the index. We wanted to be. We want to be using the index. Oh boy, I've been talking. I've been talking for too long. I'm starting to lose my words. <laughs> so we're going to base it off of the index. Now, this is something important to remember about um, text layers when we're talking about index. So notice that the numbers have changed. They're not percentages anymore. It says from zero to eight. Oh, zero to eight what? What is, what's zero to eight? Well, it's based on words, so it's zero to eight words. Okay, okay, cool. So for this first range selector, let's select all of the words that we want, right? Let's select um, all of the words that we want. Boop, boop, boop. There we go. So we've selected all of these words. I'm going to zero out... Um, these positional changes here, just so things aren't bumping around as we uh, mess around with this stuff. So as you can see, this one is now correctly selecting 
all of the things we're interested in. And now down here, let's make sure that this one here is likewise selecting only the things we're interested in, right? Selecting, you know, um, from five to, to eight, right? So there we go. So we're going from, from here to there. Um, so hopefully that's good. <laughs> oh no, we're having, we're having a, a lip sync problem, eh? Oh, that's weird. Hmm. Well, it's probably because my, you know, various avatars and stuff are breaking down. <laughs> so, uh, let's see, let's see. We have about 10 minutes here, so I'm going to try to rip this pretty quick. So, like we said, this range selector is selecting this stuff, and what we want to do is push it away. So we're going to push it, you know, 800 pixels that way. These ones down here, we want to push 800 pixels the other way, and then we are simply going to shrink... Um, we're just going to shrink their selections um, so that it's no longer uh, a thing, right? And so this one is going to shrink like this. This one is going to shrink like this. And there you go. Clown fish are not as scary. Nailed it. Nailed it. Okay. So hopefully that kind of answered uh, the question from yesterday that we actually kind of got to um, uh, today. I hope that was satisfying. I hope the person that asked it is, is, is still around as well. I don't totally um, uh, remember... Um, uh, uh, who who was uh, who had this quandary? So I hope that that um, does in fact answer uh, the the question um, that uh, that worked. Um, and uh, yeah, so hopefully that is good. So let's do a quick recap of what we talked about today uh, before we uh, before we move along to the other programming that'll be happening uh, here. So. We talked about on day one. We talked about all the things we all the things we got into. So here we're gonna go day one. Go into the example. On day one, we talked a lot about animating properties. We talked about that today too. But on day one, we were talking about this idea of going up the stairs uh, by having elements that animate on and then hang out, and then and and they just build and build and build on top of each other. We talked a lot about text animators. We talked a lot about um, uh, parenting. We talked about um, some masks and mats as well. And then today we kind of continued uh, some of those ideas. So today we talked about the concept of, of going down the stairs, right? And the idea of, of a composition that will be leaving. It'll be taking its ball and going home and revealing what's underneath. Um, so that we can we can have that kind of a, a movement if we want. Now, granted, uh, we we should probably also talk about that. Sometimes you want elements to arrive and leave. They they show up and they leave, which will mean that your stairs are kind of like upstairs, downstairs, upstairs, downstairs. Da, 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 you know, you're kind of going on this um, more zigzaggy journey with elements in here. But uh, elements that arrive and leave are useful for moving into uh, a premiere context or creating templates out of. So that'll be some more advanced stuff, but I hope this has helped you kind of get started in these two methodologies. Then we also talked about um, uh, a new other ways to reveal layers. So we talked a lot about masks today. We talked a lot about mats today. We talked a lot about trim paths. Uh, trim paths were, were a big thing at the start here, where we talked about, yes, you can you can trim just about any line you like, um, and it'll hopefully behave the way you expect. Um, but uh, trim paths is basically revealing along a path, how much of the path will we stroke, will we put strokes on um, and so we, we went into that. We went into using track mats. We talked actually quite a bit about um, about track mats um, in this context. Track mats plus video equals fun times. So I hope that it has been a sort of fun times uh, for you. Um, and that kind of brings us to the end of the stuff. Well, I hope that I hope that my my mouth is now synced up to the audio that you're hearing. Um, I want to thank you all very much for hanging out with me today, for for getting started in After Effects. I hope that this has helped you 
um, with some good kind of beginner ideas, some good fundamentals for you to go out there and start making uh, creative social posts, some creative anything really, logo reveals, um, you'll be doing all kinds of interesting text stuff, and hopefully that that is that is going to help. If you would like more of me in your life, I'm at EC Abrams uh, on the internet. You can find me out there on Twitter, on Instagram, on Behance. I'm on here uh, uh, doing stuff every weekend. So if you want more After Effects in your life, uh, come hang out with me uh, 10 o'clock on weekends here on Behance.net. Um, uh, if you want to just find me on there and follow, you'll get notifications for when I'm doing live streams of the Chill MoGraph Brunch and also the Make My Logo Move Project. Um, if you want more After Effects tutorials, you can find me uh, at EC Abrams uh, on YouTube. Anyway, Twitter, Instagram, it's the same thing everywhere for me. Um, but that'll do it. Thank you all so much for hanging out, for being with me. Like I said, we have a rich full day of activities coming up after this. So do stick around. Your daily creative challenges are coming along. And uh, yeah, it'll be it'll be great. Anyway, be kind to each other, stay creative, and I will see you around the internet. Bye for now.